Hello, I'm Kingsley Singleton and welcome to this Photoshop video lesson from Digital Photo, the UK's best-selling photography magazine. Cropping is one of the most important photographic skills to learn because not only can it help prepare your images properly for print, it can also improve them by removing areas that are bland and dull and thereby tightening up the composition. In fact, very few good photos have no cropping at all, so it's something you should always consider at the start of the editing process. Fortunately, Photoshop and Elements make cropping dead simple, and in this video lesson I'm going to show you how the crop tool functions, along with a few tips on how to get more out of it and speed up your workflow. The first thing we're going to look at is how to use the crop tool to accurately size your images before you print them out. And basically, this is a great way of making sure your picture is the same size as the piece of paper you're printing onto. That means no more unsightly pieces of white, unprinted paper that you need to trim away after printing. So let's first just come over and select the crop tool which you'll find here in the toolbox. Just give that a click. Or you can also pick it by pressing C on the keyboard. And then back over to the image and click and hold the mouse button and drag out the marquee over the picture. As soon as you release the mouse button a cropping marquee will appear. And then we can simply click and drag on these corner handles to resize the marquee choosing which parts of the images are going to be retained after we make the crop and which are going to be lost. The latter being those outside of the marquee and those covered by what's known as the shield. That's this darker area which you'll notice if you have the shield box ticked. But while this way of using the crop tool is handy from a purely aesthetic point of view it doesn't really help us when it comes to printing out the image because all we're doing is losing pixels around the edge. We're not resizing the image and we're not specifying how large we want it to be when it's printed out. To do that we need to use the options bar but before we take a look at that we need to get rid of the current cropping marquee and all we need to do to get rid of it is press the escape key. And now, if we just take a look at the top of the screen here, along the options bar, you'll see there are a number of parameters that we can enter to control the size of the image after we crop. So, say for example we have an A4 printer and we want to print out this picture using that, and filling the paper perfectly, all we need to do is in the width box enter a width of 210 millimeters, then come over to the height box and enter 297 millimeters and then in the resolution box we'll enter a value of 300 pixels per inch and that just means that we're printing at a good high quality. And now if I click and drag out the marquee in the same way as before you'll see we get something slightly different because although I can still click on these corner handles and drag it around the dimensions of the cropped area are actually constrained and whatever I leave inside this area is going to form our A4 sized print. And if I just press the escape key again to get rid of the marquee and come up to image and down to image size you'll see how this works. At the moment the image is just as it came off the camera and while its dimensions are quite large its resolution is actually quite low. But as soon as I make the crop, just dragging out the marquee again and then to finalize the areas we want to keep I need to either press return on the keyboard or double click inside the marquee area. The photo has now been perfectly sized into an A4 document. And for proof of that just come up to image, down to image size and there you'll see we've got our width of 21 centimeters or 210 millimeters as we put it in 29.7 centimeters high and a resolution of 300 pixels per inch just as we requested of the crop tool. So that's a really good way of making sure you get out of your printer exactly what you want. But what if you don't have an A4 printer or in fact you do, but you want to print your image at a different size altogether. Well, Photoshop's got that covered too, because not only can you amend the width and height and the resolution to pretty much whatever you want, 
You can also select from a number of preset options just by clicking on the downward facing arrow next to the crop tool up here in the top left of the screen. This will open up the tool's presets and if you can't see them just press the right facing arrow in the menu that appears and come down to where it says crop and marquee. Give that a click, answer OK when prompted and now we get a list of commonly used print sizes 4 by 6 inches, 7 by 5, 10 by 8 and of course A3 and A4. To select one of them just double click it you'll see the width and height transferred into the relevant boxes though you will have to add the resolution yourself and then of course if you do want to swap the width and the height values over turning a portrait crop into a landscape format image all you need to do is press these two little arrows in between the width and the height boxes so it's a very very handy and quick way of working but the use of the preset options doesn't end there because say for example I have a differently sized photo frame that I want to put this picture into I can just enter the values I want to use say 9 inches by 12 inches and then I can save these values for use later just by opening up the preset menu again and clicking on the create new tool preset icon press that we'll be asked to give the new cropping parameters a name which is taken from the width and the height so if you're happy with that click OK and you'll see that the new parameters have been added to the list and the really good thing about saving your own presets is it records the resolution because as we saw earlier the preloaded versions that come with Photoshop rely on you to enter the resolution yourself so having it recorded is a nice way of speeding up your workflow and the final thing I'm going to show you is a really handy use of the crop tool which not only allows you to get rid of parts of the image you don't want but also straighten everything up in one go here in the example image you'll see that we've got a bit of a crooked horizon quite a common ailment in landscape images and that's something that can really throw the whole composition off just makes everything look a bit untidy and off kilter but we can fix that by first just clicking and dragging out a small version of the marquee and then just clicking inside the marquee itself just one click and holding the mouse button down and then moving it up so that the bottom of the marquee is sat right next to the horizon itself next up we're just going to move the cursor outside one of the corner handles and then click and drag to rotate the marquee now what we want to do is line up that bottom with the tilt of the horizon so just keep clicking and rotating it until you've got something that's a good match that looks pretty good to me so now we can click on the corner handles and drag them out taking in once again all of the parts of the image that we want to keep and then when I hit return or double click inside the marquee you'll see the horizon has been straightened up nicely if your calculations were a little bit off and it's still a little bit wonky just press Control and Z on the keyboard this will take you back to the pre-cropped version drag out the marquee again just matching it up with that tilt perfectly clicking and dragging out the corner handles and then double clicking inside the box to finalize the crop until you've got something you're really happy with okay I hope you found those tips useful and that you'll use them when you're editing your own images because they really are a great way of speeding up your workflow and most importantly improving your pictures see you next time